Welcome to Smyrna Christian Church, where the entire Word of God is taught straight from the Bible. Good evening. Welcome back to Smyrna Christian Church, back in Leviticus, picking up chapter 7, verse 11 tonight. Remember, Leviticus is about how to worship the Lord. And at this time, they had the animal sacrifices, the ceremonies, and the rituals. But when Jesus Christ paid that price on the cross, He did away with all those things. And He became the sacrifice once and for all. But a big thing about Leviticus 2 is it, it's teaching you the difference between being clean and being unclean. And it teaches you how to be clean. And how do we be clean today? You repent of your sins. And your sins are washed away like they never existed when you sincerely repent because of that price that Jesus Christ paid on the cross. But you see, Leviticus is so powerful. We learn from the types and the symbology. And like it says in Galatians chapter 3, about verse 24, the law is the schoolmaster that brings us to Jesus Christ. So when we study this book of Leviticus, it makes you want to remain clean. It makes you realize how important it is to be in that clean state, to have your sins forgiven, to be in that good standing with our Heavenly Father. So you're in good standing to receive His blessings, to receive His wisdom when you study His Word. And that really comes out when you're studying Leviticus. And at first you might not even realize it. But when the Holy Spirit teaches you through His Word, it is truly so powerful. We're going to learn uh, today, we're going to get a little bit of extra information about the peace offerings, and it's going to kind of round out the animal sacrifices for the time being. And one thing that was so special about the peace offerings is that um, part of it would be given to anyone that's in a clean state. Uh, they got to partake of a sacrificial meal. And that was like being in a very close uh, uh, partaking with our Heavenly Father. It's almost like you're getting to sit down and eat with our Heavenly Father, for a lack of a better way of putting it. But it's the type of that you read in Luke chapter 22, verse 30, where it says the day is coming that you will sit down and eat and drink at the table with the Lord in the kingdom of God. And that's what this sacrificial meal was leading us up to. So let's get into it. Let's ask a word of wisdom from our Father. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. In this place you've given us, we can teach your word. We ask you to guide us through this study with your Holy Spirit. We ask you to give us eyes to see and ears to hear, to understand and teach your word. We ask that your words be spoken and your will be done during this study. Thank you and we love you so much, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus Christ, precious name. Amen. All right, pick it up, Leviticus chapter 7, verse 11, and it reads, And this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings, remember that Shalem in the Hebrew, which he shall offer unto the Lord. We learned a lot about the peace offerings in chapter 3, which gave us, it talked about the animal sacrifice that would go along with it. But what we're about to read here is the, the bloodless things that would be added on to it that would, uh, part, that would make up part of the sacrificial meal. Verse 12, If he offer it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cakes mingled with oil, and unleavened wafers anointed with oil, and cakes mingled with oil, a fine flour fried almost like pastries, as we've talked about before. And we're going to have about three different types here. And this first is for Thanksgiving. And we've talked about a great deal already in Leviticus, how leaven is symbolic of a few different things in God's Word. It's symbolic of sin. It's symbolic of false doctrine. It's symbolic of hypocrisy. And so you get all those things out of the church. There's no room for that. And there's something about this thanksgiving that, that I want to study. I want to go to just read a couple verses very quickly in two chapters of Psalms. Turn with me to Psalms 107. 
And like I said, we're going to be reading about these, uh, the sacrifice of the peace offerings. And you always have multiple witnesses in God's Word. And that's another thing that I really love about Leviticus is when you read about these sacrifices in other places, when you have the knowledge of Leviticus, you can really picture it in your mind. And you can understand it even better. So we're going to go Psalms chapter 107, picking it up in verse 15. And it reads, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. That means he sets you free. He looses the shackles. Whether you're so caught up in something, anything, addiction, whatever. Jesus Christ will set you free from that if you put forth the effort and if you ask God. Verse 17, fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. I mean, when they're going in the way of wickedness, they don't have peace of mind. 18, their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near into the gates of death. I mean, they get so caught up always looking over their shoulder. Never any peace of mind so much it gets so bad that they can't even hardly eat. Is that the life you want to live? Of course not. 19, then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. It doesn't matter what you've done. Just sincerely repent, turn to God, and he will deliver you out of all your distresses. Psalms 34 goes into that in great detail. Verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Well, who's his word? Jesus Christ. John chapter 1, verse 1, and John chapter 1, verse 14. Verse 21. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. So that sacrifice of thanksgiving, that's exactly what we're going to be reading about in the, in the book of Leviticus of course, these animal sacrifices and ceremonies, once again, they're nailed to the cross. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 through 17. But what does God want from us? Hosea chapter 6, verse 6. It says, I don't desire your sacrifices and your burnt offerings. It says, I desire your mercy and for you to have knowledge of God. How do you get knowledge of God? Through His Word. Before we go back to Leviticus, let's just read a couple of verses, a few of them, in Psalm chapter 26. Psalm chapter 26, a psalm of David, verse 1, and it reads, Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. How, much, how amazing is it to have peace of mind? To know that you've repented of your sins and you're in that good standing, in that clean state. To examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with dissemblers. Dissemblers is someone who they conceal their actual, appear, their actual opinions with a false appearance. The point is, you don't sit with wicked people. That doesn't mean... It says in Isaiah chapter 65, verses about 3 through 5, mentions a couple things, and it says that those who say, oh, I'm holier than thou, don't come near me, it says they're like a smoke in God's nose. So God doesn't like self-righteous hypocrites. But this is saying you don't sit with the wicked, with those who hate God, with those who do truly wicked things. Verse 5, I have hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash mine hands in innocency, so will I compass thine altar, O Lord, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. And that is what we do. When was the last time you just told someone how amazing God is? just reminded people of the blessings that He gives. When we just try our best, so you wash your hands in innocency, you get in that clean state and be in that good standing for the many blessings that God so loves to pour out 
on those who just try their best. Now let's go back to Leviticus. Keep going in this Leviticus chapter 7. Picking it back up, Leviticus chapter 7, verse 13, and it reads, Besides the cakes, he shall offer for his offering leavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of his peace offerings. Now we read back in chapter 2, verse 11 of Leviticus, that no leaven or honey was to be put on the altar as a sacrifice. So what's this saying? The leavened bread would become a part of the sacrificial meal that would be eaten, not sacrificed on the altar to God. Verse 13. We got that. 14. And of it he shall offer one out of the whole oblation for an heave offering unto the Lord, and it shall be the priest that sprinkleth the blood of the peace offerings. And we're going to read more about the heave offering later in this, uh, in this chapter. But it, means, it literally means to, to lift up. And this heave offering, it would be like lifted up to the Lord, but then it would be like God was giving it right back to them because this would be for the priests. Verse 15, And the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall be eaten the same day that it is offered. He shall not leave any of it until the morning. And so what I thought about on this is you don't waste time. When it's time to do something for God, you do it. You don't put it off. Verse 16. But if the sacrifice of his offering be a vow or a voluntary offering, it shall be eaten the same day that he offereth his sacrifice, and on the morrow also the remainder of it shall be eaten. So you can go eating onto it in the sacrificial meal into the second day if it be a vow or a voluntary offering. And a vow offering, I think what that means is that you, were, you would take this, uh, this sacrifice of a peace offering and that would be like you officially, that would be like you officially vowing something to God. Saying that, okay, I'm bringing you this peace offering. This is me promising to you, God, that I'm going to do something. But don't forget, just like we've talked about recently in Leviticus um, in a certain spot, and also we mentioned Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 5. It says, if you vow, this is me paraphrasing, but if you vow, you better make good on it. And it says that better to not vow at all than to vow and not pay. So a whole lot better idea just to do what's right in the first place rather than making a vow to God. And, um, and the, the voluntary offering, it, that Hebrew word literally means to be spontaneous. So I think this is just like, just, you just feel like giving praise to the Lord. Just feel like just thanking Him. I, oh, I feel like offering this peace offering today because God's so awesome. And once again, we do not do these sacrifices anymore. That would be an abomination because Jesus Christ paid the price. He became all these things. So what do we do today? We go to our Father in prayer. We thank Him for the many blessings He gives us. We tell other people of his wondrous works like we just read in Psalms. And how happy does that make him? You plant seeds of truth when you feel led. Verse 17. But the remainder of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burnt with fire. Now this burn, this word is not katar as we've seen in other places in Leviticus. Katar means that they'd throw it on the altar and it would go up as a sweet savor, vapor to the Lord. No, this word burn is saraf and it just means to burn like you burn it down. It does not go on the altar to God, but you, you just burn it. And it's, uh, that's the end of it for that. Verse 18. And if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings be eaten at all on the third day, it shall not be accepted, neither shall it be imputed unto him that offereth it. It shall be an abomination, and the soul that eateth of it shall bear his iniquity. So you follow God's instructions. There are so many details that you have to follow, and that, that's how it was with these animal sacrifices at that time which that's all done away with now, but now we just follow detail by detail what God tells us to do in His Word. You follow God's Word exactly as it's written. You be exact. Just stick to the Bible and men will lead you astray, but God's Word will not lead you astray. 
on that part how it says, neither shall it be imputed unto him. I thought about Matthew chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, where it says that when you do alms, meaning that's just like good deeds, it says if you go and you sound the alarm, if you go telling a bunch of people about it, then it says there, you have your reward. You wanted to be seen of men, then all right, that is your reward. You're not getting a reward of God. It's not going to be imputed unto you. Verse 19. And the flesh that toucheth any unclean thing shall not be eaten. It shall be, a bur it shall be burnt with fire. Once again, saraf. So this is saying that an animal that would have been clean to sacrifice, let's say it came in contact with a dead animal, with the carcass of a dead animal. That would make it unclean, as you see in Leviticus chapter 5, verse 2. So if it came in that contact with, an un with something unclean, it could not be sacrificed on the altar to God, but it was to be burned down with fire. Then continuing in verse 19, And as for the flesh, all that be clean shall eat thereof. Now this part, this flesh, this is talking about the people. This is saying that you could only partake of that sacrificial meal if you're in a clean state. And we're going to really talk, be talking about what makes you unclean, especially in chapters 12 through 15. You see, all that, that ceremonial stuff, we don't have to go through all that anymore. So, what, like I mentioned before, to be clean today, you just repent of your sins sincerely. You can't trick God. But if you confess your sins, like it says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, God is faithful to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Then once again, you're in good standing with him to be blessed, to be fed with the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ, which is the truth of his word. And you will be so blessed. And you will have such a close relationship with God when you just try your best, when you communicate with him, when you pray to him. Verse 20, but the soul that eateth of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings that pertain unto the Lord, having his uncleanliness upon him, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. That's not an option to be unclean. And so don't stay in your sins. Come out of them. Repent. Verse 21, moreover, the soul that shall touch any unclean thing as the uncleanliness of man or any unclean beast or any abominable unclean thing, and eat of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings which pertain unto the Lord, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. God wants to make sure that we get that through our minds. That word abominable in the Hebrew is shaketz, and it means, it means filth or even an idolatrous object. We're going to see it used in Leviticus chapter 11, but then it's only used in two other places besides Leviticus. It's Ezekiel chapter, or it's, yeah, it's Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 10 and Isaiah chapter 66 verse 17. And those both have to do with um, false ways of religion. Ezekiel chapter 8 even talks about the image of jealousy. So yeah, you, go, you might go to church, but what happens there? Do you do a whole lot of traditions of men that you can't find in the Bible? Because Christ said traditions of men make the word of God of none effect in Mark chapter 7, verse 13. So just because something's religious doesn't mean that makes it right. This book of Leviticus, getting it through our mind to do things how God said to do it. Don't take my word or anyone else's word for what they say about anything concerning God and how to worship him. You have to study it for yourself. Study to show yourself approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, like it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Verse 22. Now we're kind of going to switch gears here a little bit. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, You shall eat no manner of fat, of ox, or of sheep, or of goat. And the fat of the beast that dieth of itself, meaning it just dies of old age or whatever, and the fat of that which is torn with beast, meaning it got killed by another animal, may be used in any other uses, but ye shall in no wise eat of it. One way the fat of animals can be used is it can make candles. I also saw something that said that 
Um, if you put the animal fat on a mosquito bite, it'll it'll help that. I don't. I've never tested that. I don't know if that's true, but but definitely multiple witness witnesses say the animal fat definitely good for making candles. Verse twenty five. For whosoever eateth the fat of the beast, or of which men offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, even the soul that eateth it shall be cut off from his people. So God makes it clear, if he says something to do, if he says to do something, you do it. If he says not to do something, then you don't do it. Or you're going to have a price to pay. Verse 26. Moreover, ye shall eat no manner of blood, whether it be of fowl or of beast, in any of your dwellings, whatsoever soul it be that eateth any manner of blood, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. And of course, when you kill an animal to eat it, you bleed it. Of course, that's common sense to us today. And you see, there's many things in God's word that maybe people even found out way later and they thought it was some big revelation, but it was in God's word all along. And uh, make note of Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, which says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. So you don't eat the blood. Verse 28. I mean, that'd be very, very unhealthy. It putrefies. Verse 28. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, he that offereth the sacrifice of his peace offerings unto the Lord shall bring his oblation unto the Lord of, of the sacrifice of his peace offerings. Verse 30. His own hand shall bring the offering of the Lord made by fire, the fat with the beast. It shall he bring that the, that the breast may be waved for a wave offering before the Lord. Now notice his own hands. That means you got to show that you are willing to do it. And remember, faith without works is dead, like you see in James chapter 2. I mean, they were willing to do something. So the, the, wave, the wave offering, um, let's go another verse, a couple more verses here. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, verse 31. And the priest shall burn the fat up on the altar... But the breast shall be Aaron's and his son. So that the part of the, the breast part of the animal, that would be given to the priests, that the priests would be able that the priests would be able to eat. That they were to eat. That that was their job to eat. Verse 32. And the right shoulder, the, the part of the leg, shall ye give unto the priest for an heave offering of the sacrifices of your peace offerings. So they'd be given the right shoulder or the leg, and they'd be given the breasts. Would, would, the breast would be the portion of the priests. And remember, we talked about the heave offering. It's like a lifting up. And of course, anything that we have, it's because God gave it to us. It was God's in the first place. But they, do, they did these sacrifices to show that they love God, to show honor to Him, to show thanksgiving to Him. It could be for a vow or just spontaneously want to just give it to God just to show him that they love him. Verse 33. He among the sons of Aaron that offereth the blood of the peace offerings and the fat shall have the right shoulder for his part. Verse 34. For the wave breast and the heave shoulder have I taken of the children of Israel from off the sacrifices of their peace offerings and have given them unto Aaron the priest and unto his sons by a statute forever from among the ch children of Israel. So you, they'd, we read about it once again in chapter 3. They'd take, the, they'd take the animal, put the hand on the animal's head, and they would sacrifice the animal. Some of it would be sacrificed on the altar to God. Then certain part, like we just read, the, the heave shoulder and the wave breast would be given to the priest. And then another part would be given that even the offerer, just um, anyone that's in a clean state, they would be able to partake of that sacrificial meal. And it, that would be a very close communing with our Heavenly Father. And I wanted to mention in 1 Samuel chapter 2, you got two wicked priests, the sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas. And you see, they, it, it wasn't enough just to get the wave breast and the heave shoulder. No, they'd go around and when people were, were offering up their offerings, they'd take like a, a big fork basically and they, they'd stick it in and they'd grab it. They'd just take whatever they want. 
They'd be stealing the, they, they would be stealing the very offerings of God. I mean, just pure wickedness. And you'd see in 1 Samuel chapter 2, the people would kind of be trying to reason with them. They'd say, no, either give it to me now or I'm taking it from you. I mean, we've talked a lot in Leviticus about in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, judgment begins at the house of God. And we've mentioned 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, where it says, Beware of false prophets that bring in damnable heresies. And it says they also make merchandise of you. A whole lot of churches, all they want your money. That's why they talk about it so much. That's why they pass plates. Don't be made merchandise of. Verse 35. You can also make note of Exodus chapter 29, verse 28, also with the, the heaved shoulder. Verse 35. This is the portion of the anointing of Aaron. That's the priests. Aaron's the high priest, and his sons would be the priest line. And of the anointing of his sons, out of the offerings of the Lord made by fire, in the day when he presented them to minister unto the Lord in the priest's office. And so now we're kind of getting a little summary here. And so the priests, they, they would get, um, you could call it compensation, if you want to put it that way, for serving the Lord. And we just talked about it yesterday. I'll mention it again, that you know that God's elect, those of you that stand against the false Christ, you will be priests and reign with Jesus Christ through that thousand-year teaching period and you can read about that thousand years. That's, that begins when Jesus Christ returns to this earth. And uh, you can read about it in Revelation chapter 20, that thousand years. And uh, in Revelation chapter 20, it mentions like uh, people, it mentions God's elect all throughout time. Like those like John the Baptist, who he, he was beheaded. He's a part of God's elect. And then you also have those who will be here at the end that will stand against the false Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through them. And remember, like it says in Luke chapter 21, verse 18, when that time comes, not one hair on your head will perish. But God's elect, they will be priests through that thousand years. And Ezekiel chapter 40 through 48, those last nine chapters, all about that thousand year teaching period. And when it's talking about God's elect, the, the Levites, the priests, the sons of Zadok in Ezekiel chapter 44, beginning of verse 15 in the following verses. Zadok means the righteous, that's God's elect. It says that, and you get to about verse 28 and 29, it says, every dedicated thing in Israel shall be theirs. And God says, don't give them any possession, meaning any allotment of land. God says, I am their possession. I am their inheritance. So you have God's elect that stand against the false one. That's Satan when he arrives as the false Christ. You stand against him and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you. God is your inheritance. God is your possession. What an amazing thing that is. We've mentioned how many things in Leviticus you read also in those last nine chapters of Ezekiel. And it was these physical animal sacrifices. They teach us the spiritual. And it will be all spiritual in the millennium. Verse 36, which the Lord commanded to be given them of the children of Israel in the day that he anointed them by a statute forever throughout their generations. We're going to be reading about the, the anointing of the priesthood in chapter 8 of Leviticus. Verse 37, this is the law of the burnt offering. That's what we read in chapter 1, Ola in the Hebrew, of the meat offering. That's the minka that we learned about in chapter 2. Of, of the sin offering, that's what we learned about in chapter 3, and uh, the, uh, you got the sin offering, and of the trespass offering. So that basically went into about uh, chapters about 4, 5, and 6, basically. And of the consecrations, and for the consecrations, make note of Exodus chapter 29, verses 19 through 35. And of the sacrifice of the peace offerings, and it's the peace offerings, just chapter 3. Then the sin and the trespass offerings is chapter 4, 5, and a little bit into chapter 6. So this is basically giving us a summary of what we've done so far in the book of Leviticus. Verse 38 to complete. Which the Lord commanded Moses in Mount Sinai, in the day that he commanded the children of Israel to offer their oblations unto the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. 
So remember the point that we're at here. God has brought them out of captivity when they were in bondage to the Egyptians. And he's preparing them to enter into the promised land. And remember, who's in the promised land? The Canaanites. And they're doing many worshiping false gods. Many wicked things. So God wants to make sure the Israelites know the difference between being clean and being unclean. And when we get to chapter 11, about verse 44, a verse that's also quoted in Peter, God says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And notice how God is so close to us. I mean, the creator of heaven and earth and the whole universe and the one that's created our very souls, I mean, he's right there for you. I mean, just pray to him. I mean, you feel his comfort through the Holy Spirit. And he gave us the word. He gave us the Bible, which is literally God's word that tells us how to be happy, how to be blessed, how to be clean, how to be healthy. I mean, it tells you how to be successful. And people search for all those things all their life. Many times they look everywhere but God's word. So they're never blessed. They never have peace of mind. But don't ever overlook how this book of Leviticus just, I mean, it just drives you that you want to be in that clean state. I mean, think about how they partook of that sacrificial meal, how that was such a close communion with God. You might think about how we partake of the Holy Communion today. We partake of the, the bread, which is symbolic of Christ's body, and the wine that's symbolic of the blood that he shed on the cross. And you don't have to go up to heaven or go down to the sea to look for God. God is right there for you always. And His Holy Spirit dwells within you and He gives you peace. He gives you peace that the world does not give is what you learn about Jesus Christ in John chapter 14, verse 26 and 27. So stay on the right path when you sin. Just repent. Turn to Jesus Christ. Have that happiness and that blessing and the wisdom We'll get into the unlearning of the priesthood in chapter 8. And remember, you, God's elect, are going to be that priesthood in the millennium. Let's go to our Father's throne. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. In this place you've given us, we can teach your word. And we just ask you to continue to give us understanding, not just for ourselves, but so we can share it with others. Thank you, and we love you so much, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. This was recorded in the year 2023 at Smyrna Christian Church in Kokomo, Indiana by Pastor Jesse Sisk. God bless.